So, yes, I'm Lee, and I am a man, and uh, I've had 40 years to try and deal with this situation, and quite frankly, I'm still confused by the whole business. Uh, this was also the reaction from most men when they found out what I'd be speaking about tonight. It's like, whoa, dude, we said we wouldn't go there. Um, reaction from women was quite different. Um, they either really wanted to know the answer, or they were dead keen to tell me the stories of their blokes. Um, so I'm thinking there's a good chance I've probably got at least 50% of the audience in, you know, enthused about the subject matter already, which isn't bad for the end of slide two. Um, there's a lot of books been written about this stuff. Uh, I even found one with the title, uh, If Men Could Talk, which seemed to be offered in the same spirit as If Badgers Could Fly. <laughs> the, the problem was is that they didn't really agree with each other, and um, neither does the science. Uh, lots of studies about the differences between men's and women's brains, an actual picture of a man's brain. Um, and lots of things about the different ways we use language as well, but disputed there. And so, like any new parent, I went to the best scientist I know, which is Miriam Stoppard. And um, she said that even really early on, there's big differences between the way girls and boys, they play together, the way they socialise, the way they talk, the way they use language. Now, I don't know whether that's true, but it's said to be true. And is that part of where we start to get our expectations of what our sons are going to be like? <coughs> My daughter's 15 months old, and I already see people are treating girls and boys of her age very differently. Uh, the boys get told to be brave little soldiers. Uh, and is that where we get this archetype of acceptable maleness from that gets passed down to us? Uh, this idea that big boys don't cry, or that somehow to be engaged with your feelings is, is feminine territory. Where did that come from? Um, but if men do show extreme emotion, it can be quite shocking. Now, my wife's seen me like this on about three occasions, and like, whoa, she was not prepared. And I, one of my female focus groups said, well, the problem is if men talked about their feelings, we'd have to listen to them. <laughs> We're not prepared either, because the problem is we go out with our mates in the pub, and we talk in big groups and we drink beer, um, we don't get that one-to-one -one time that apparently the women do when they spend with their friends. And, and if we are talking just one-to-one -one with a, another man, it will be purely factual. It will be news, sport, hobbies, politics. We certainly won't go anywhere near what's going in on our head or our heart. Um, and that's, you know, not particularly good. And I'm wondering whether or not it's something primal going on. You know, tens of thousands of years ago, we were competing with these other guys for food and bison and mates and stuff. So we certainly weren't going to show them a vulnerability or a weakness, and maybe that instinct is still really strong. It's really confusing, you know, we've got to do two things here. Three things. Very confusing. We've got to actually identify and recognise what our feelings are, then we've got to go try and articulate them, and then we might even have to think about what to do with them. That's tricky stuff. And it gets even more tricky when we're required to do it in part of a relationship. I mean, we've spent years not thinking about our feelings. Meanwhile, what all women have been doing is thinking and talking about their feelings. Okay, it's absolutely terrifying. And if we do get into a conversation, oh, there's the typical male traps, you know. We're always too action-focused. We see a problem, we want to dive in there and solve it and fix it, okay? It took me ages to find out that actually what my wife wanted to do was actually talk about how we got there and how she felt about it first. Um, you know, and if this stuff about differences in language skills and emotional literacy and everything that I read about is true, you know, it's not an easy, you know, equal starting line. It's no wonder that sometimes we panic a bit and we'll clam up or we'll shut up. But I don't want you to think I'm here to justify why men don't talk about their feelings. Actually, I want to champion it, okay? One of the reasons I work in men's development is that I believe that men can and should talk about their feelings more. And if they did, there'd be lots and lots of benefits. Stress, for instance, is going to affect us at work, at home, in our relationships, in our families. If men were a little bit more aware of the emotions, if they shared them a little bit more, maybe if they were asked for help a little bit more, you know, that could really make a big difference. Because men were quite happy to study and improve our brains and our minds, and some of us will go to the gym and will even moisturise to look after our bodies. But what about that middle bit, the sort of third segment, the emotional bit, you know, that's at the heart, pun intended, of making a whole person? Now, some of you are already there, and if your partner's already there, you might not have recognised a lot of what I've talked about, but I was rubbish at this stuff for a really, really long time, and I've worked hard on it, I have got better, it's improved my happiness as a person, it's improved my relationships. So look, that's all I've got. Come and say hi in the bar if you want to talk about this stuff, guys as well. Um, 
if one day I'm happy that, you know, lucky enough to get a son to come along and join my daughter, maybe we'll have made some progress and he can come back to Ignite Bristol in another 40 years. It's just his talk will be, crikey, why can't men shut up about their feelings? <laughs>